Hello, everybody. Adam Savage here in my cave. And good morning. Um, it's a beautiful new week. It's a Monday. Uh, and I am doing some first order retrievability for the workbench. I have... I like to set everything up, as Tom Lipton says, like a fighter pilot. I want everything within arm's reach of me. And uh, to that end, I recently... To that end, recently, I made the top drawer of my workbench all Dremel stuff because I use a lot of Dremel stuff. And then I was... Um, yeah, I have a lot of friends who call me about this channel and they say things like, dude, uh, every time you recommend a tool, I got to go buy it and it's expensive. And I have the same thing with other people's YouTube channels, specifically, specifically Stefan Gotzevinter. Uh, he recently did a shop tour, an end of the year shop tour in 2022. And uh, he went and recommended a tool and I thought about it and went and got that tool, and it's unbelievably great. And it is the Nakanishi Evolution, uh, the Emacs Evolution, Nakanishi. Um, this is a... <laughs> okay, in the, in the annals of rotary tools, at the... At the base level is the Dremel. Like everyone should have a Dremel. A Dremel is just like a key model making tool. You can't, you can get by without it, but you'd rather not. Now within the Dremel, there are a whole multitude of modalities. And I like the Proxon Dremel, which has been stuck by a magnet here, part of first order retrievability. But, um, but this guy, this ever loving guy, let me just show you something here. Up. All right, so it's comprised of a motor, uh, a gear housing that holds the tool and different collets. All right. That's 25,000 RPM. These are expensive. This is a dental tool. These are not cheap um, in the uh, over $1,000 range by a fair margin, right? I think I paid 14 for this thing. And that is a, that's a, it's a ridiculous price to pay when a Dremel will get you there. At this stage in my life, I feel like this is worth it and I can afford it, so I did. Um, I immediately packed up the Proxon. It's no longer here. Um, and that's, look, that's like personal preference. You know, when you reach a certain level of your career and what you want to spend on and the ways in which you want to return on that investment, one of the things I really have a problem with with Dremels and even the Proxon is that at the high end of the spinny range, there's a lot of noise in it. You can feel that. And uh, that leads to a little more trouble cutting, frankly, and etching. Uh, and Stefan uses this thing for like, every time he cuts a piece of steel, he cuts a chunk out of some 4140 and he re-etches 4140. I have some engravers around here, but this will do all of that. Plus it takes three millimeter bits, which is the Dremel size, which is basically uh, one eighth of an inch. Give or take, there's enough of a margin in there that it fits the standard eighth inch bits. So I decided this was totally worth it to me to possess one of these. Yeah. Okay. That's my defense of my, <laughs> of my pleasure expense. Um, but this thing, wow, it is, uh, it's pretty special in terms of what it can do. And it's like a die grinder. I can deburr with it. I can... One thing I noticed about the import of a Dremel within the process is that honestly, every single time I walk into Peter Lyon, the sword master at Weta, every single time I walk into his shop, he is at the at his bench, like 
carefully massaging a transition of a piece of sword furniture to be perfect. And owning one of his creations, I can tell you, <laughs> it's worth it. Like the work he puts in, it shows up on the screen, it shows up on the piece. So I'm, I'm really pleased to add this. Okay, that's enough defending of my expensive purchase. Um, but now I want this to live boop, right here. So let's, um, let's talk about this. Yes. Uh, oh, look at that. There we go. So I want it to live right in here. In fact, I can unplug it. Let's turn this off. Pop this in. So I want it to live like right there. And then I realize I also use um, a blow. <coughs> excuse me. I use a blow dryer all the time, and I'm super in love with these. I recently dis uh, was introduced to <laughs> at Tom Sachs's shop. So I want to put that there. And then there's also this, this, the glue gun, which I use all the time. And I'd love to have a glue gun in here. So I want to make a little, a little sorter so things can't disappear back in here. And there's no backsplash to this. So it can fall all the way through, which is problematic. So I'm going to build a little platform using this Luan and some scrap half inch ply I've got and make myself a little a little sorting cart that will be glued and screwed together. It's a quick and dirty one day build, but this, I hope, what my goal is here is that this really allows me a, um, a nice flow. All these things will be powered uh, and I just wanna be able to pop them, use them, pop them back, pop them out, use them, pop them back, just to be really like, again, first order retrievability. These are, I consider these three tools, the glue gun, the blow dryer and the uh, the roto tool to be mission critical tools for me. And they need to be, they need to live in this bench. They need to live the bench. So yeah, there's a bunch of stuff going on today. So I might not finish this today, but that doesn't matter to you. You're just watching a video. This video is going to be what, 15 minutes, 20 minutes long. Yeah, it's all going to happen inside of there. I don't know why you need to know about my schedule. <laughs> We're gonna go 20, ooh, no, we're gonna go 19 inches. 19 inches on this. That's what we're gonna do. Yeah, that's how it's gonna do In order to give this thing a little bit of structure, I'm going to use the uh, table saw blade to cut in some slots here for my dividers. Uh, and I'm going to do I'm going to do either end first because this will. Did I? I did. I cut the wrong side of it. That's 19. That's 19. Oh yeah, and I still have more. Okay.
that lives there. And this one lives here. This one lives here. The question is, yeah, I guess that can do that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, all right. Wait. All right. So now, so now, where are you? There it is. So. I know it gets in the way of my oils container, but that's actually, I can live with that. That is nice in there. And then this guy, hang on. thought that one through as carefully as I should have. So, what can I do? Maybe this one needs to live here in a custom holster because that's just not enough room. But that is a nice little extra bit of... Ponder this one first. Uh, yeah, so... Let's try that. This is an interesting one to me because I, I thought I was going to be solving this problem today, but I think this is just, I think this is iteration number one. Um, I definitely screwed up the glue gun, 
I had been thinking that maybe I'd want it over here. Um, this makes me very happy. Uh, I wish there was a, well, maybe I can actually, yeah. Anyway, um, some stuff to, basically, I think that there's, I, I need to consider this. This I'm happy with, although I wish I had it on a retractable plug. But you know, we'll see how, we'll see how I like packing that up like that. That may, that may bore me in a way. And also this may move back. Uh, there's a lot of parameters I'm not really sure about. So frankly, <clears throat> I just think rather than let this video sort of hang out there while I think of this, we may finish it here. And this is a very quickie sort of uh, iteration 1.0 of a one day build, which frequently happens. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's pretty good. Um, and I will learn from using it how useful it actually is. Thanks for joining me for this. See you guys next time. Sorry, it's such a quickie. Hey guys, Adam Savage from Tested here. If you've ever seen the six inch ruler in inches and centimeters on my forearm and wanted one of your own, but you didn't want it to be permanent, well, today's your lucky day. You can now buy temporary tattoos of my measuring stick my measuring forearm uh, at tested-store.com. Comes like this, goes on in about 30 seconds with a little water. The instructions are on the back. It comes off with rubbing alcohol and hopefully it warms you up to the idea of permanently attaching a measuring device to your body because I use mine every single day.